So, yesterday we were talking a bit about caddis flies. I did a foam one, and I mentioned a Goddard caddis, and I tie this one a lot. I haven't made a video about it yet. I don't know why, but uh, we're going to start this fly off with a size 8 dry fly hook from Daiichi, the 1180. We're going to have some just green uni thread. It's a 220 denier in olive or 3 0. Like having a stronger thread. Don't exactly feel like you need GSP for this fly you could definitely use it if you wanted to with a 220 denier from uni thread seems to work out just fine for me let me know in the comments below if uh, what's been working for you I mean I have switched to GSP before to just flare the hair and tie the rest in the green or what have you but I don't know it's it's a lot of uh, changing moving around and I don't know if it's necessary anyway I have some Chanel this is some micro Chanel I got for really small woolly buggers but I like it for this body here I I have loose fibers all over it so I just wanted to clean it up a bit but I've stripped all of the fuzz off of the main fibers in the middle that hold it all together and that is the part I'm tying in don't really want that whole clump of fuzz it's gonna mess things up And I'm going to be going over the top just a few more wraps so I'm closer to the, the real bend of the hook. <clears throat> Alright, that's looking better because this is going to just get folded under all the deer hair or elk hair, whatever you, you're using to flare up and make your your wing um this is just gonna hug underneath and really be the body it's all gonna be hair it's gonna float real well um it's nice for those rapidy conditions next to a rock or a down tree where you know they're hanging out um i bow and arrow cast this a lot into tight spots and sometimes catch fish anyway now that we've got that all set up, looking for a deer's hair stacker. I know I had one. Actually, this is a better color. I'm, I think I'm going to use that deer hair instead. Oh, and here's my stacker. All right, so stackers are, are nice. They're not necessary, but, uh, I mean, you could trim this thing. I know a lot of people trim it and make it look really uniform and flat on the back I like to try and almost put a collar on the back part of my wing I just think it looks cool so I'm gonna get a decent pencil and a half or full-size sharpie marker out of my hair and I'm gonna pinch the front part and pull all of this and just let it go you don't need it you're gonna get all that fuzz out and 
and you can sort of spin these fingers against each other to flare this out and get in between them all. Like I still see I have plenty of this. None of that is what all of that is what we, we're trying to remove. We don't want any of it. Sorry, I'm stumbling over my words this morning, but get this clean. You don't want any of this stuff. Well, the big, the big hair was nice, but there's still a lot of this stuff. Maybe I should go, I've been going hard the one way, grab it from the opposite side, do a few strokes on the, on our tips. This is looking a lot better. Um, I noticed though, if you do own a stacker, this makes getting the staticky little hairs out a lot better because you can sort of regroup. You can let this stuff go. You can shove it down in your stacker, uh, give it a few taps. Sometimes that like settles all this fluff up and out. out all the little tips should be stacked up we're doing this point point down I'm gonna restack it again. I was just cleaning, cleaning it up. You can just see the banding. All those little black tips there. This is why the stacker is really nice. want to tie it in about a hook's length back. We're going to flare. And we're going to walk our thread. In between our hairs get to the bottom and cinch tight walk it through again get it down to the bottom cinch it tight get it through get it down to the bottom cinch it tight we don't really want a lot of the hair walking down but it's okay if it does at this point, I don't know if I really need to hold on to the back anymore. I'm pretty far forward. Okay. 
we're going to add another stack of hair. whole side of my needle tool to pack this hair down as hard as I can. I'm going to remove all the fluff off of my new clump of hair. It's not as important that this one is stacked. In fact, you could clip the tips off if you wanted to make it a nice uniform color. I don't know if it really needs to be that way. I think Caddis wings are a little bit mottled. Now I'm going to sort of pinch and, and hold this but down into the hook. I'm not holding it on top. I don't really care. I'm going to do another two wraps. I'm going to pull this all over the place. my thread through take my bodkin and pack that hair down we're looking for strong flies that will float all day and uh, that's about good. I have room for my antenna and then my hackle over the top. But at this point, I'm going to take a scissors and just clean this guy up. I don't really want to hit the tail. But if I look closely, I will just taper all this material up to the tail. I mean, I'll get in there and trim it out. Um, but start with wide general sweeps for cuts and then get particular after. Also, get a really good vacuum. Otherwise your wife will be upset. Anyway, um, getting closer to the hook. I don't want this to be a huge ordeal. I just want it to be a little tent like a caddis. Be very careful when you go to trim the underside that you pull your dubbing away and you don't want anything down here so cut this all flat. you cut a little bit into that collar in the back it's okay this is like really good training to do like marabou mudlers and other deer hair flies the point is it's it's good practice you don't need to have these guys absolutely perfect you're not gluing eyes on them and trying to make them into faces
I you know I should have like write jokes and have them prepared for when I'm doing my trimming on video so I can entertain better but I don't I don't have any off the top of my head I'm focusing way too hard on trying to trim this up but side I just do so this point we're gonna tie in tie back our body material so we'll make it nice and green on the bottom Get a few paces up, once or twice, back down to our deer hair. It's good. Let's clean up the the fuzz, make it smooth. Um, all right, hackle. I have a gray, gray cape right now. I've been tying off of. I have like brown, and most people tie it in brown. Um, the fact of the matter, though, is, is it's just slopping, strong, strong slopping. I don't, you know, it, it's not, it's not great. It's you, you pay for what you get. I'm gonna pick it out of a cape. This way, I I can pick how big my feather is and how long all these legs and arms are gonna be. Um, I mean, the strung shop and or, or strung rooster hackle, it, it's cheaper. It, it definitely is. You know, you can get like a packet for five to ten bucks, maybe fifteen if they if there's a lot in the package or something, but um, I don't know. This this cape at at Cabela's I think was about thirty bucks. It's gonna make a lot of flies though. So it is what it is. We're gonna take a little bit of turkey tail. I know some people make the antennas out of pheasant tail. You can, you totally can, if that's what you have available to you. I think turkey tail is a little stiffer, and I think the antenna stick out a little bit better. But this is personal preference on how I tie my Goddard caddises. Uh, I just want to. I'm not going to use like a ton of them. There's two of them together. I have sort of bead them apart. You want to do this before you tie it in. Of course, they're not going to split with the bodkin on the camera up close up. There we go. Out of the camera blinding LED lights around it. Well, of course I'm going to drop it. Anyway, I've got two of them. There's two here. We're going to tie them in just a few loose turns on the top. Obviously tighten them down as we go back towards our deer hair body. Trim away the root. 
it's obviously the tip is the antenna part and um, yeah we're gonna pick out a feather Now I know the general guide is like how long the fibers are against the hook. I think this feather is going to work out just fine. You don't want your barbs to be way past the, the, the gap in the hook. I'm going to be stripping away. I guess I got two feathers. I'm going to use two feathers, so well. Now I've stripped away a little bit just to be able to tie these in fairly easily. I'm going to hold on to my tips, trim them away. They get stiff otherwise and terrible. I'm going to fold my feather back to where I want the legs to start. And I'm going to get my thread all the way forward so when I'm done wrapping this stuff I can do a quick finishing knot and uh, be over it. Now, I'm looking for a hackle pliers just to make my life a little easier, but... And here we go. Hackle pliers. going to resort to uh, different tactics anyway. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to get out of it. I don't know why I'm fumbling with this whole exercise so much. Alright. They're locked in. I'll do just that and capture it with my thread. Alright. It's early. Sort of stormy day I would be fishing if I don't know the dog wasn't so scared I might have lost one of my antenna and all that I don't really know how no it's here they just got wedged together
There's a bunch around the hook eye. We're gonna fix it with our bodkin and a finishing knot. I'm gonna push against it. Hopefully not screw up our antennas totally bad. Do another finishing knot. We want this to float flat, so I'm going to just go ahead and clean this up with my scissors. <laughs> 